our God is amazing. This is the God that does exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. This is the God who says nothing is impossible with him. This is the God that says that I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, more than enough. This is the God that gives more than enough. This is the God that owns it all. This is the God who says, ask anything in my name. This is the God who says that he gave his son, how will he not through him freely give us all things? This is the God that we serve. And this is the God that wants to do exceedingly abundantly for you in your life, in your situations, in your circumstances, in your dreams. That's the kind of God he is. Well, I was standing in the kitchen last week, and I, I was thinking, and I was just thinking and listening to some praise and worship music on YouTube on my little phone, and as I was standing there, I was thinking about throwing this party for a friend of ours that I'd found out that is moving like in two weeks, and she didn't have a baby shower yet, and, and now she's moving away, and I was like, oh we got to do something for her. She's done so much for so many people. And I, I just felt like the Lord said, you know, she needs to be honored. Her and her husband need to be honored. So I was like, okay, Lord, we got to honor her. we got to do something for her. We're going to have a party for her. We're going to have a going away surprise party for her. Well, I, I was like thinking about that, but I, I realized this, that I had like Zippo money, no money. And I'm, I'm thinking, and really I'm, what I'm doing is worrying and I'm letting lack entertain me. So this poverty spirit was just speaking to me, you know, you can't do this, you know, no lack. And you try to get that one lady to help you. She's busy. She's got friends coming and da, da, da. And, and I just like, was like, huh. And I, and I, I, um, I'm thinking about all this junk, how I, I don't have the means to do this. How can I do this? And and all of a sudden, it was like, duh, hey, you're a woman of God. You're a woman of God. Do you not know how great your God is? That there's nothing impossible with him? That he is an incredible God? That you ask anything in his name and he'll do it for you? Don't you remember that he's the God that does exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think? And right when I was thinking that that scripture exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think suddenly that YouTube praise and worship song just cuts off like in the middle of it and it goes to iTunes and it starts up right at the course of my husband singing exceedingly abundantly you are more than enough he that song and, and I knew there was no way in the natural that could have happened I knew it was God giving me a sweet, tender, loving rebuke that, hey, don't worry, I got you covered. I'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think. See, this is the God that says, whatever you have, just put it in my hands and watch me bless it. Watch me do miraculous things to you. Watch me fulfill your destiny and purpose. Let me, let me do more than you could imagine or think or dream. Let me do it. I love Moses. Moses is, he has taken his shoes off. He's before God at the burning bush and he's talking to the Lord and God's telling him, I want you to go to Egypt and I want you to deliver my people out of slavery. And, and he's telling him all the instructions of what he's supposed to do. And Moses is like, me, me. <laughs> and, and he's like, they're not going to listen to me. How, 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 how are they going to listen to me? And God says, what's in your hand, Moses? And Moses looks, uh, a rod? Yeah, there's a shepherd cook. He was a shepherd, shepherd rod in his hands. And then in verse 17, God says, I'm going to do miracles, wonders through that rod. You see, Moses, he went to Egypt. And what did he have in his hand to deliver the people of Israel? He had this rod. And he'd take this rod and throw it on the ground and turn to, to a snake. He'd pick up the rod and it turned back into a rod, or the snake, and turned back into a rod, he'd hit the, the water, and it would part, or he hit the, the water, and it would turn to blood. I mean, all these miracles happened as Moses went and obeyed God, and took what he had in his hands, and trusted in the Lord. 
It's like that, that little boy in John the sixth chapter. Jesus is sitting on the mountain and all these people are coming to him because they want to be healed and they want to hear his words, but they want healing. And Jesus looks over at Philip and he said, how much will it cost to feed all these people? And Philip's like, 200 denarios won't even start it to feed these, this multitude of people, Jesus. And Peter goes, hey, there's a little kid here, a little boy. He's got five loaves and two fishes, Jesus. And Jesus said, bring it to me. I love that God takes our little, our little loaves and fishes, and when we put it in the hands of God, you know what happens? Well, Jesus blessed it. And he had the disciples sit down, those 5,000 men, and that could have been 20 to 40 to 50,000 people because it wasn't counting the women and children. And he has them all sit down, and he just begins to bless the bread and the fish and breaks it. And the disciples take it and hand it out. And as they're handing out this, this loaves and fishes, there was enough. Not only was there enough, but God did exceedingly, abundantly, above all that they could ask or think. See, there was 12, loaves, uh, 12 baskets full of those loaves and fishes left that that, Jesus, that, that that little boy had given over to Jesus. Jesus had multiplied it. God wants to take whatever you have and as you put it in his hands, God will multiply it. He'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think, so that you could touch many, many people. I love the scripture that says, God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency for everything, you may have an abundance. Let me say that again. An abundance. What? I'm going to do exceedingly, abundantly that you may have an abundance for every good work. Every good work. God says, I want to give you an abundance for every good work. You know, God wants to pour his goodness out through you. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking for a people that will trust him. A people that will say, hey, Lord, here's my little, make it much. He'll take your little and he'll make it much. God takes our little and he makes it much. There's a scripture in Luke that says that give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give to you. God says, hey, I want you to give away. I want you to give for every good work. I want you to pour your life out. I want you to put it in my hands. Whatever you have, put it in your hand, my hands. And God says, you know what? I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to cause it to overflow. Let me say that again. God says, whatever, whatever, put it in my hands and I'll multiply it. I'll, I'll do exceedingly, abundantly, good measure, pressed down, above all you could ask or think. I'll do it. I'll do it for you. I love that God so loved us that he gave his son Jesus and that Jesus came to open heaven for us so that we could receive the exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think from heaven for every good work. The Bible says in John the 12th chapter and Jesus is talking about his death, unless a seed is sown into the ground and dies, it abides by itself. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus was willing to die on that cross for us, to sow his life, to give it away, to be a seed, so that he could receive the exceedingly abundantly above all he could ask or think. That's you and I, his bride. I love in Romans, the eighth chapter, Paul is thinking about what God has done for us, and he's just like, oh. he says, what can we say to these things? It's too wonderful, it's too wonderful. What can we say to these things? What can we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up freely for us, how will he not through him give us all things, all things, all things, all things. Sounds like exceedingly, abundantly, all things above all we could ask or think. Now that scripture comes from Ephesians, the third chapter. And if you go toward the end of the chapter, 
It talks about being strengthened with power by his spirit in our inner man so that he may grant you to be strengthened with power by his spirit in your inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that we being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of the love of God. And the Bible says that we might be filled with all the fullness of God, to know that love of God, so that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. And then it says this, then God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think, according to that power that works within us. And I love that. According to that power which works within us. What is that power? Well, it's the power of knowing your God knowing the love that he has for you, being confident in that breadth, the length, the height, the depth of the love that he has for you, being filled up with the fullness of God because you're wide open to receive that love. And God says, when, you, when you've done that, you know what, There's this, my spirit is at work in you, and you know what, you know, you know that I'm going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think. You're just expecting it. You can trust me. You can put your little in my hands and watch me multiply it and to feed the multitudes. You can put your little in my, in my hands and watch me deliver people. You can put that little in my hands and watch me conquer principalities and powers and bring them down. You can put that little in my hands and watch me be glorified and look in your hands and see there's still more than enough to keep on giving. This is the God that you serve. This is the God that loves you. This is the God that wants to take your life and use it exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think to supply every need that you have to bring forth the kingdom of heaven, to show people the kindness and goodness of God, to bless you. He loves you. Have a wonderful day and know this. He is with you, he is for you, and he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. This is the God that loves you, and this is the God we serve. Bye-bye.